Hello everybody, let us start lecture 37 and the course is corrosion protection methods. So, we have been discussing uh, change in electrode potential and associated corrosion protection. We have talked about mechanism, we have understood uh, uh, both the protection methods like cathodic as well as anodic protections with the help of mixed potential theory. And then we also talked about differences uh, uh, between ICCP as well as sacrificial anodes, uh, those are part of cathodic protection. I also we have talked about the difference between differences between uh, anodic, anodic protection and cathodic protection. Now, we also try to understand uh, 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 those differences in greater details also like uh, in case of anodic polarization, initially though it requires very high current density, but later on it actually goes to a very current, uh, very low current requirement to maintain uh, protection potential uh, and it is a direct measure of corrosion rate what we achieve during the protection. Whereas, in cathodic protection, it is more of a empirical relation. Now, uh, we will try to look at uh, uh, some of the calculations related to current output uh, from a sacrificial anode as well as we also would like to see uh, uh, how to calculate number of uh, a number of uh, sacrificial anodes required uh, for sending uh, current required for a good amount of protection. As well as we also would like to see uh, how to calculate uh, the weight of the total anode that will be required uh, for giving uh, protection to a structure for certain period of time. So, let us look at uh, uh, the calculation of current output. Now, uh, if we look at uh, uh, the design of uh, the setup for sacrificial anode protection. So, this is my let us say magnesium anode and the current electron will flow this way and current will flow that way. This is current flow. And this is uh, let us say pipe which is getting protection. So, magnesium will dissolve and gradually will get uh, protection. Now, when we try to do that uh, to understand uh, that current output that means this output current which is going into the pipe or leaving magnesium anode that would depend on few uh, aspects. One aspect is resistivity of uh, soil. Second aspect of course, this is rho uh, which is basically ohm centimeter or uh, it is ohm uh, meter whatever you would like to put it up. Now, geometry generally long anodes uh, give better current output. or higher current output. And third is uh, higher the driving potential higher would be the Now, uh, resistivity means I am talking about this soil. Now, uh, this driving potential del V, you can consider the polarized potential for the part which is to be protected and here it is OCP or open circuit potential of the anode.
Now, uh, if you connect it uh, that time the potential might vary a little bit, but uh, if we initially consider uh, the initial circuit potential. So, that case if we consider anode pure magnesium del V would be uh, 1500 minus 850 millivolt which is close to or 155 uh, this is generally magnesium open circuit is 1.55 volt with reference to copper copper sulphate. So, these potentials in case of cathodic protection generally copper copper sulphate reference electrode is used up is actually used for measurement of potential because that is a very rugged uh, uh, electrode uh, uh, and uh, this uh, reference electrode is very rugged and it can be uh, carried with hand and uh, it does not break easily. At the same time when we try to measure soil resistivity or uh, when we try to measure uh, the potential polarized potential of the of the uh, sacrificial anode okay or uh, the pipeline so that time what we have to do we have to connect the terminal between the pipe and uh, the uh, the cap that particular copper copper sulfur reference electrode so what we do uh, let's say uh, in a place you have this pipe and this is the terminal so, now in the soil, this is the soil let us say, in the soil I put that copper sulphate, uh, I insert it in, into the soil very close to that material, uh, that, that structure which is being protected by the sacrificial effect of another anode. So, we try to see this potential difference. Okay. Uh, so, that is what uh, we need copper copper sulphate and there as per NASA criteria is 850 millivolt in case of steel. So, if we maintain that potential or further down, so this potential polarized or E polarized is should be less than minus 850 millivolt, so further negative and further negative means is cathodic polarization. So, that is the potential we are talking about and now when we try to see the potential difference between these two. So, then it is nothing but uh, this is minus 1550 millivolt which is the OCP and this is minus 850 millivolt. Now, when we talk about uh, the potential difference between these two which is the driving potential that becomes 700 millivolt. Now, uh, in case of zinc if this becomes zinc then del V is for with respect to steel is around 250 millivolt. Now, uh, these are the three aspects which would lead to higher uh, current output. Now, basic equation is uh, nothing but V equal to I R. So, now this increases, this remains same, then definitely I would increase. Now, if R decreases, V remains same. I would go up. So, this is one instance. Second instance is V go up, R fixed, I would go up. So, like that way we could see that uh, resistivity and driving potential they have direct relation with reference to this uh, V equal to I R that is a basic equation. Fine. Now, uh, we can uh, calculate uh, that current requirement. Uh, by using two formulas in case of magnesium when it is uncoated because that current is given by magnesium because this is sacrificial anode. So, we are not connecting it to any external power source that has a formula like mg i mg equal to 15000 fy divided by rho. So, this is for uncoated magnesium uh, electrode. So, now these values, these values 
we can get it uh, from different tables. To arrive at this equation, there are background calculations and all those equations are guiding that. But let us not get into those complications, simplified way we can put it like this, where f is a factor, y is also a factor and rho is the resistivity. Fine. Now, so, so this is, uh, these are all uh, decided by, uh, by the anode weights as well as uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, length and uh, diameter of those pipes. Those are the dimensions would decide what will be the factor f, this is you can say dimensional factor. Dimension as well as number of anodes uh, to some extent. Now, y is nothing but uh, it is related to um, pipe or tank which needs protection and uh, this with reference to soil. So, this potential difference, these potential difference would lead to different values of y. For that, uh, definitely there are background calculations. We are not putting, getting into those calculations. We are simplifying this particular equation. Now, if it is uncoated, this is the situation and this is in terms of milliampere that is the current you will get. Now, on the other hand, if it is coated, that time the current output uh, coated means uh, this is the pipe I am talking about. When uh, the pipe is uncoated, and here when the pipe is coated. So, that time current output requirement would be less and current output also become less, becomes less. So, that means that time it becomes the formula uh, is uh, 120, 1 lakh 20,000 Fy divided by rho. Now, uh, so, in case of coated pipe, we do not require that much of current output because uh, let us say I have this is a bare one and another one is let us say coated. Uh, if we make it coated, if it is coated, now by chance there is some sort of break in the coating let us say this part is uh, there is a break. Now, for protection we need to only send current here. Okay. So, that is what the current uh, output uh, becomes less. Now, in case of zinc as well as uh, aluminum we can find such equations. Now, we can calculate uh, uh, this current requirement uh, uh, using uh, these formulas like one example, let us uh, solve that example. Uh, some uh, data set if we talk about. Uh, so, let us say we have the what the problem statement says. Let us say we uh, want to calculate current output for a 17 pound packaged uh, magnesium anode. So, this would be helpful uh, to find f uh, from the uh, table. Now, uh, the resistivity of soil 
since uh, this is the same arrangement what we have here. Okay, so, resistivity of the soil it is uh, 2000 ohm centimeter and the pipe one pipe is being protected. So, that is bare or uncoated. And uh, the pipe and soil potential difference is around minus 850 millivolt. Okay. So, that is the uh, potential difference and of course, uh, this is measured with respect to copper, copper sulphate reference electrode. Fine. Now, that case uh, we can calculate first let us see what is the F value. For that uh, we can think of uh, using this data set let us say standard anode and this weight is in pound. Now, uh, details of the dimension as well as uh, the arrangement. So, if it is uh, 3 standard anode we are using and if it is packed or packaged, then we can use 5, then it is also packaged. 5 number of course, then it is uh, 9, uh, ah, sorry this is a standard anode, this is a single anode. So, this is 3, uh, these are basically weight of single anode. So, this is again packaged and 17 pound, this is also packaged. Now, um, if we try to see the factor F, so in this case it is 0.53. So, this is uh, 0 0.60, 0 0.71 and here it is 1.0. So, A is equal to 1.0 from this table. So, this table is much longer table. Uh, you can refer principles of corrosion engineering and corrosion control uh, by uh, Jackie Ahmed. So, that book if you follow in the cathodic protection segment, you can find this uh, uh, tables. On the other hand, you can also find out uh, Y from the table. So, here P by S which is the pipe and soil reference, uh, soil potential difference. So, that is if it is minus 7.0, it can vary like 0 0.80, 0 0.85, these are uh, in volt. Okay. Now, for magnesium it is uh, 1.14, then it is 1.07, this becomes 1.0. For zinc, these, uh, this is basically Y values. Zinc it is 1.60, 1.20, here it is also 1. Fine. So, this is Y which is a correction factor actually and it is uh, dependent on uh, uh, resistivity uh, of the soil. Now and also the dimension. So, this uh, factor y comes up and also we know the resistivity, resistivity value is, is already given. So, we put those in that equation. And here since it is a bare, so we have to use I m g equal to 15000 f y divided by rho. Now, since it is a packaged magnesium anode, so f becomes y, y from the table we can find out since the 
uh, pipe to soil is uh, 0 0.570, 550 millivolt or 0 0.5, 0 0.8, uh, sorry, 850 millivolt um, and or 0 0.85 volt. So, y is 1. Now, i m g equal to 15000 into 1 into 1 divided by 2000. So, it becomes 75 milliampere. So, that is the current output. Now, if we and this is remember this is for single single anode. Now, if we try to find out uh, multiple anode, let us say if we try to find out uh, multiple anodes, let us say we talk about uh, four parallel anodes. and uh, they are of 10 feet apart one can obtain uh, so this uh, current requirement becomes like this img would become now here also we have to use one correction factor so that correction factor comes from the uh, number of anodes as well as anode spacing in feet so, that case the formula is like this uh, correction factor depending on anode number and distance between two anodes. Okay. And then the current what one anode gives. So, this is the so the current output by one anode. Now, here we can again use uh, make use of a table. So, here is number of anodes. an adjusting factor or the correction factor so now we can think of uh, this is coming because of number of anode and anode spacing so if we talk about uh, two anodes. So, the number of anodes let us say two number. Now, if, if it is 5 feet away, if it is 10 feet away, if it is 15 feet away and then we can also think of 20 feet. So, that time these values becomes 1.839, 1.9 Nine four six. So, like that way, you can find out for different numbers of anodes. Now, we are considering four anodes, four number. So, these values for different anode spacing becomes like this: uh, three point. If it is four, when it is three feet away, uh, five feet away, zero point zero three six. 455, this is 65, this is 37.14 like this. So, now we have put 4 parallel anodes and 10 feet apart. So, we have to use this 4 number and then this table we have to use. So, this is the value we have to use. Now, in this equation we can put it 3.4 five five into we have already calculated for magnesium with that condition 
75 milliampere. So, this becomes 259.125 milliampere. So, this is the total current output. This is total current output. It is basically uh, multiplied by uh, the four anodes. Only difference is uh, if we consider, the yeah, only difference is that correction factor comes for different other reasons because when you try to use the basic equation V equal to I R, that R contribution would be different at different segments and different junctions. For example, there could be one I R due to the uh, black uh, backfill and uh, the anode and then backfill and soil and then soil and uh, uh, soils, soil and uh, uh, pipe surface all those uh, resistance factors would come up. So, that is what uh, it is not exactly uh, the uh, current that is given by one anode and multiplied by the number of uh, four number of or a number of uh, anodes what we uh, think of using and then find out the total current output. So, there should be a correction factor because of those variations in resistance and dimension shapes all those factors. So, do not we do not get into those complications this is a simplified way of looking at it. Now, we can also calculate uh, number of anodes uh, by using uh, simplistic formulas as well as weight of the anodes total anodes for a specific period of protection. So, let us look into this. So, now another mode of calculation what we can think of is calculation of number of anodes required uh, and what could be the spacings. Okay. So, in order to do that, we can also uh, calculate, uh, for example, let us uh, see the problem. So, let us put up like this, uh, think of a pipe which is to be protected and this is bare, uncoated and if we try to see the dimension it is 1000 feet and uh, this is the length cylindrical pipe and the diameter is let us say 24 inch. So, this is uh, diameter. Now, it is to be protected. Now, for that uh, we need to send uh, some amount of current density. So, let us say we need a constant supply of current density of 1 milliampere per feet square. Now, uh, the resistance uh, or resistivity of the or resistance, let us say resistance of the soil. is uh, which is R ohm per centimeter cube let us say and uh, we need to uh, for anode output anode current output let us say that value is around 100 milliampere single current single uh, anode that has this particular and this is a specific to this type of soil. So, 
So, this is the current output. So, we can calculate number of anodes. So, first we have to find out the area and total current requirement. So, we have to calculate the number of anodes and spacing for this specific current density that is to be supplied to the uh, pipe. Now, area of the pipe we can calculate 2 pi r h 2 into 3.1424 into 1000 So, this is 24 is basically the in inch. So, in order to convert into feet, so we divided by 12 and this is the diameter, so we divided by 2. So, this is uh, feet square, so this is the area, surface area. So, we can uh, get rid of this. So, then it becomes uh, 2. 6 0. So, this is the total area and we know what is the current that will be required for protection of the entire area. So, which is uh, the current density required is equal to 1 milli ampere per feet square. So, then total current that is to be required is 6280 into 1 equal to 6280 milli ampere. Now, we know the anode current output. So, that has been calculated by using uh, that formula. If it is a magnesium anode, so then it is 15000 f y divided by rho, this is i m g when pipe is bare. So, the magnesium is never coated. So, it is pipe that is coated and coated case uh, uh, this value would become 1 2 0 0 0 0. Now, those f and y we can find out uh, from uh, those tables as we have uh, discussed be, uh, just before uh, before coming to this part. Now, this is the uh, total current that will be required for protection uh, when we need to supply this much current density. So, number of anodes in a simplistic uh, simpli a simplified manner, we can calculate this total current output uh, required by the pipe or by the pipe surface divided by current output of a single anode. So, here we are not using any uh, correction factors uh, for uh, multiple anodes uh, if they are put up uh, at some distance. So, that case it will be 6280 divided by 100 milli ampere. So, this should be the value. So, this comes around 62.8 which is roughly around 63 anodes. I remember when we use this formula because this is this 100 milli ampere that current output is for a single anode. Now, if we use multiple anodes and if we put at a different distance, let us say 5 feet or 10 feet or 15 feet, there should be some correction factors, but roughly those correction factors can be taken as uh, same as the number of anodes. So, the correction factor uh, that can be taken, for example, if we use 4 the correction factor also becomes 4. So, like that way we can put it up, but uh, here 
we are actually not using that uh, specific correction factor. So, we are simply using that uh, uh, this much if one single anode gives uh, 100 milli ampere current. So, then uh, uh, the 63 uh, anodes would give you the 63 into 100 milli ampere that is the total current required to meet this current density. Uh, so, this is the way uh, to calculate number of anodes. Now, uh, one can also calculate total weight of the anode. So, that would be calculated on the basis of uh, let us say I want to supply 1 ampere current for let us say 10 years. So, 10 years protection would be required and uh, I know the capacity, this is the requirement. for protection. So, uh, 1 ampere current uh, for 10 years that will be requirement uh, and we know the anode capacity. So, now we know the magnesium has anode capacity of the order of 50 percent of its theoretical. Earlier we have also calculated, we have also seen how to calculate this theoretical anode capacity by using the atomic weight of that particular element and then trying to see uh, uh, that element uh, dissolves and theoretically it should not have any self dissolution that means self corrosion. For example, if we have a magnesium rod, whatever dissolution happens and that particular dissolution whatever current output it gives that will be entirely used up by the uh, pipe. So, that time we do not have any self dissolution like for example, there could be local cells. So, local this is positive, this is negative that local cell forms. So, the current will flow from negative to positive which is cathode, this is cathode this is anode and current will flow from negative to uh, or the anode to cathode through the soil. So, this part will dissolve. So, that time uh, uh, we have self dissolution, but in theoretical situation all the cathodic reaction must happen on the pipeline, but that may not that is not the that is that that cannot cannot be uh, possible in actual situation. So, that is where the efficiency drops down. So, magnesium operates at 50 percent of its efficiency. Now, if we know the value of that anode capacity let us say x which gives in terms of ampere hour per kg. So, now we can find out what should be the weight by using this formula current into specific period of Uh, protection here it is 10 and this current is nothing but 1 ampere. We are saying that 1 ampere current should flow and then divided by the capacity anode capacity which is in terms of ampere hour per kg. ampere hour per kg and then we have to also multiply with uh, one factor say 8660 and this comes because uh, whatever uh, calculation we are doing in terms of if we do not put this value we are doing in terms of uh, a one hour basis. Okay. So, now we have to find out for 10 years how many hours it becomes. Uh, so, for one year we can calculate how many hours 365 into 
24, 365 days. So, this if we multiply, you should get this. So, that becomes uh, the total weight. So, now if we, so this is total weight in terms of kg. So, uh, 1 ampere into 10 into 8760 hour into kg ampere hour. So, this become this much kg. Now, this is done with respect to 1 ampere. So, this, uh, this can vary. So, let us say I want uh, uh, 100 milliampere. So, you put that value current value here. So, this is nothing but the current value that is required for 10 years for protection. So, if we put that you can also find out what is the kg. You find out the number of anodes. Now, the basic formula becomes total weight in kg required for protection with the requirement of some specified amount of current output or current density we can think of just like previous problem. So, that we can find out let us say we want uh, this is amp or uh, let us say this is x is uh, the current in ampere let us say um, y is the years of protection. anodic uh, let us say z equal to anodic efficiency. This is practical not theoretical which is impossible to achieve. So, then we can put that formula kg is, is equal to x y into 8760 divided by z and this is in terms of ampere hour per kg and in fact if we look at this thing we are just uh, operating with the units and that is what we are left with kg. So, if you do that this is in terms of kg you will get it. So, these are some of the uh, calculations uh, which I can we can use for designing uh, anode numbers as well as uh, or finding anode numbers or uh, what could be the uh, current output as well as weight of the anodes required for specified period of protection to a structure. There are lot more uh, uh, calculations that can be done. So, let us uh, uh, not get into those complications. These are all uh, very simplified uh, situations I am talking about. So, let us uh, uh, end this discussion and from the next uh, uh, lecture onwards we will start talking about inhibitors. So, till then thank you.